Well, I've been interested in pain because although I'm interested in sensory systems, the thing that makes pain unique is the, the aspect of suffering. It makes it, it's a lot different from, say, seeing and hearing that pain has this quality of, of unpleasantness at best and suffering at worst. And trying to think about how the brain systems that mediate pain are, are special and mediate those suffering aspects to me was uh, important because that's what really bothers people about pain is the suffering. So I study, there's actually populations of neurons in the brain, some of which can facilitate pain, some of which can inhibit pain. And what I'm trying to do is understand the balance between those two populations of neurons, how that balance has changed under different conditions, and how that those different populations might be recruited or influenced by drugs that treat pain. So Dan Cleary here is an MD-PhD student uh, in, uh, in the lab, and what he's, he's been recording the activity of neurons, uh, it, these pain modulating neurons that I just told you about that can inhibit or, or facilitate pain in a, in a model of uh, persistent uh, or abnormal pain, and we're trying to see if we can uh, determine if the activity of the pain facilitating neurons is abnormal and that'll give us a way potentially to control abnormal pain if we can damp down the activity of those abnormal neurons. Good pain is pain that warns you that you're you're about to do some damage to your body and you know you need to kind of take care of your body if you're going to live to a ripe old age. Um, but there's a lot of bad pain pain that doesn't go away once the initial damage has healed, pain that um, uh, occurs when there's been damage to part of the nervous system, that shouldn't cause pain, and yet it does. And so trying to figure out ways that we can control bad pain while preserving good pain is one of the big challenges in pain research. And Zach here's um, looking at some slides he's taken some from some brain slices from uh, the part of the brain that has these pain modulating neurons and he's labeled them for um, a receptor that we think might be useful in separating out some of the um, desirable and undesirable effects of uh, manipulating the pain modulating system. So really there's two thrusts. One focuses on what's going on out in the in the damaged tissue. What happens when you have some damage? And is there some way that we could block the signal from ever getting into the central nervous system? The other thing that's going on now is much more of a recognition of, as I mentioned earlier, that there are changes in the brain itself. And so our, our work is really part of that uh, emphasis, which is understanding what happens in the brain. And a lot there's a lot of imaging work now, for example, in in humans showing there's not only functional changes but even a possibility of some morphological changes, anatomical changes in the brain of people with chronic pain. So I think understanding that, yeah, we'd like to block everything out of the periphery, but a lot of times it's too late. By the time a pain patient comes in, there's already been changes in the, in the central nervous system. So really thinking about the neural circuits, the brain circuits, and how they get changed in chronic pain states and then figuring out how we can block those changes I think is the other really important avenue for the future.